Let us worship God in spirit and in truth. Be someone who cultivates a love for God's Word. It's not by might nor by power, but by my spirit, says the Lord. You're the God who fights for me, Lord of every victory, hallelujah, hallelujah. You have torn apart the sea, you have led me through the deep, hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh. By day, the sign that you are with me. Fire by night, the guiding light of my feet. You found me, you freed me, held back the waters for my relief. Oh, yeah. I worship you. I worship you. 
My dad, in the initial stages of his ministry, he was a conservative Baptist pastor. But then you know what happened? The Holy Spirit showed up, and the power of God began to become a reality in that little church. And so wonderful things began to happen. But you know what? Some ministers in the Baptist Union began to be threatened because of the blessing that my dad was experiencing. And they started to threaten him. They started to try to break him down and so on. And one time, there had been a powerful time in God over a weekend, and 350 people were baptized over this weekend. And so you had to submit your figures every week to the Baptist Union. And so what happened is, some people started to say, no, these are fraudulent figures. <laughs> they have been fabricated. They are not real. And you know what? They tried to intimidate my dad, but he was not being deterred. And he said, Holy Spirit, I want more of you in the life of our church. Move even more, Lord. Let the religious mind be so ridiculously offended, but I will go for more of God. Wow. That is a faithful response to a threat. I want to tell you the enemy always wants to intimidate spirit filled believers. He wants to intimidate you. He wants to silence you and stop your influence. But don't let him do that, child of God. It says in 1 John 4 verse 4, greater is he who is in you than he that is in the world. And that same verse in the Message Bible, it says, the spirit is far stronger in you than anything in the world. And so what do you do? If you are faced with a threat, 
you call on God and you say, God, I'm calling on you like the New Testament church called on God. And I believe if you will call on God, if you'll trust in God, he will come through for you. And that's exactly what God did. He intervened in their situation. And you know what? Sometimes that is the only thing you can do. Sometimes things get so desperate where all you can do is just call on God, call on the name of Jesus. But I wanna tell you that those who put their trust in the Lord will never be put to shame. Come on, give the Lord a hand of praise, amen? <laughs> Point number two. Supernatural boldness is available through God's Spirit. We need to realize it is through the person of the Holy Spirit because that's what happened in Pentecost and it was the result of the indwelling Spirit of God in people's lives that brought about the boldness. So supernatural boldness is available through God's Spirit. You see, God is ready to reinforce you with His boldness. God is ready to empower you with his boldness. It says in verse 13 of our text, now when they saw the boldness of Peter and John and perceived that they were uneducated and untrained men, they marveled and they realized that they'd been with Jesus. It's interesting that here, the Sanhedrin, the religious council, even they could see that the source of their power was truly God. It was J-E-S-U-S. -S. It was Jesus. And they recognized that these people had been with Jesus. May people that see our lives recognize too that we have a living and a powerful relationship with Jesus. And they see, oh, you're a person who knows and loves Jesus. I wanna tell you, Jesus can do amazing things through your life if you will make yourself available to him. It says in verse 29, now Lord, look on their threats and grant your servants that with all boldness they may speak your word. Sometimes you have to ask God for boldness. And, and I just wanna ask you, have any of you in the last six months actually asked God for boldness? Think about that for a moment. Have you actually asked? Because the New Testament church, they were asking and they were receiving as a result. And so maybe we don't ask God for boldness enough, but I declare together with every one of you today and those listening that we ask you, God, for boldness of the Spirit of God in our lives. Wave a hand if you say amen at that. Yes, God, we ask you for boldness. And in verse 31, the last part it says, and they spoke the word with boldness. In other words, their prayer was answered. Their prayer was fulfilled. They had been asking for boldness and then they went on to declare the word of the Lord with boldness. Praise God. I also just wanna make it clear, boldness is not arrogance. Boldness is not being pushy. Boldness is not being forward. Boldness is most certainly not recklessness, but boldness, listen, is the courage to push past your fears and do the will of God. Let me say that again. Boldness is the courage to push past your fears and do the will of God. And you might say, well, I am very fearful. I, 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 I just cannot be a life group leader because I'm too scared. God couldn't use me. I don't speak that well and so on. You know what boldness is? It is the courage to push past those fears and do the will of God. And you'll be amazed when you say no to fear and yes to faith in God, yes to boldness in God. You know what I remember a bunch of years ago before Choose Life, I was brought before a certain committee and I was told the following, Mandri and I were in this meeting with about five senior people and uh, the senior executive of this uh, local assembly and I was told the following, John, if you leave this place, we want a commitment in writing that you will not start a church anywhere else in the city of Pretoria for a three-year period. That's what was said to me. And you know, here I was, still fairly young, 
And it was a very difficult situation because all of these men that were demanding this of me were, were people that I, I looked up to and people that I respected and so on. And so what was I to do? And here Mandri and I sit. And you know what? It's as though a holy boldness rose up within me and I said, I am not prepared to make that request. Finished and clear. I said it clearly. I said it boldly. Now, up until that point in my life, I had always been just super compliant and just, yes, sir, yes, sir, three bags full. But God had brought me to a time when I had to say, no, I will not please man, but I will please God and I will obey God and step out in the purposes of God. But I thank God because in my own strength, I may have buckled, but I wanna tell you, the boldness that God gives is very powerful and will cause you to say yes at times when you feel in your own heart you wanna say no. And you might say, well, John, I'm listening to you, but you don't realize I'm a shy person. And so therefore, boldness is just not for me because I tend to be a shy person. Well, I want to respectfully challenge that mindset. I wanna challenge that outlook because I wanna make it clear to you today that God wants to empower every single believer with boldness. Let me say that again. You want, I want that to sink in. God wants to empower every single believer with boldness, especially those who are shy. I heard a statement some years ago. Shyness is not a gift, it is a hindrance. Do you realize that? It's not a gift, it's a hindrance. I remember a story that my dad told. So here he was, he grew up in a Christian home. At the age of 18 years, he was completely converted and on fire for God. But he was still very shy as a person. And so what happened is he wanted to get involved in the church and began to get involved and he ended up in this Sunday night prayer meeting just before the evening service, a couple of people praying together. And he was very nervous, very shy to pray in public. And so he plucked up the courage this one day and he said, no, I'm gonna, I'm gonna pray in public now. I'm gonna pray in public. And in this meeting of about 10 or 14 people, he, at one point, he started to pray. And he plucked up the courage and he started to pray. And here he was beginning to pray in public for the first time. But then he froze up midway in his prayer. Oh, that's when you say, Lord, bring the rapture now, you know? But you know, his mother was in the prayer meeting as well, and she graciously just jumped in, and she completed my dad's prayer. But you know what? My dad could have stopped there and said, well, God, what happened there? I'm never, ever going to pray in public again. But he refused to be intimidated by those fears and the lies of the enemy. And he purposed in his heart, no matter what, I will begin to pray. I will begin to pray. Holy Spirit, fill me with your boldness. And ultimately, my dad became as bold as a lion, and he preached across the face of the earth. Can we thank God for what he will do? <laughs> Amen. Amen. He will take out the timidity and he will make you bold. He will do it by his spirit. And so the question is, well, how do I increase my boldness? What you do firstly is you say, Spirit of God, would you please cause me to become bold? Would you by the spirit empower me and make me bold in you? And then also you step out and you test that boldness, and you begin to pray in public, or you begin to do the thing that you feared doing. And so it is so important. But let me also say that boldness is, uh, it is a case of also speaking up at the right time. Some people say, well, I am just gonna live my life as a testimony, and other people can read my life as a living epistle. That's what they say. And I get that, and it is wonderful if your life is a living testimony. But I also wanna say this, child of God, that there are times when you open your mouth and you begin to declare things of God. You begin to declare the praises of God. It's so important that we do that, that we open our mouths. And it's not just about preaching as in the typical sense of preaching, it's about saying what God is saying. On to my third point. I don't think I'm gonna get on to the fourth point today. But point number three, it is time for the church to boldly raise its voice. Can I have an amen on that? Please say that with me. 
It's time for the church to boldly raise its voice. It says in Hebrews 13, verse 6, it says, So we may boldly say, The Lord is my helper. I will not fear what can man do to me. You know, I just want to level with you for a few moments. This pandemic has exposed a few things related to the church of Jesus Christ in South Africa. On the one hand, it has exposed a certain degree of lack of unity in the church. It has also exposed a lack of a united voice into government. On the other hand, I wanna say that this pandemic has exposed the tendency of government to discriminate against the church and to treat the church as a pushover or a soft target. And I say that with conviction, having watched carefully, having interacted with many leaders, with pastors and churches and so on. I also believe that this pandemic has exposed that government doesn't truly value and appreciate the role of the church in South Africa. I wanna say one more thing, that this pandemic has exposed that the government doesn't really respect and honor the voice of the church in South Africa. And I'm discovering more and more that we actually have a secular state that does not honor God. Come on. And if we kid ourselves and we say, no, 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 the government loves the church and honors the church, I believe we're doing ourselves a disfavor. I believe the answer is, it is time for the church to boldly raise its voice like never before. It's time for our voice to be counted like never before. And our voice needs to be counted, not just for the safe reopening of the churches, but it also be needs, needs to be counted to speak into things like comprehensive sexual education, to speak into corruption, to speak into holding government accountable, to speak into the rampant immorality. It also needs to be holding the government accountable in terms of the widespread sexualization of our society. It's no surprise that there is so much rape and gender-based violence, all of it. There's a reason, because sewers have been opened, flooding the country with all sorts of wickedness and filthiness. And so, I'm not trying to sound like a politician today, <laughs> not at all. But I believe that there is a time when the church needs to begin to address these things boldly and unashamedly, even if the consequences might be somewhat severe. You know what? The early church was feared and was respected because they were moving forward in great boldness. In Acts 17 verse six, it says, these who have turned the world upside down have come here as well. In other words, the early church, they weren't quietly minding their own business, not at all, but they were impacting their world around about them. Do you see the boldness, church? Do you see the boldness? And it says in Proverbs 28 verse one, it says, the righteous are bold as a lion. Let that encourage you. That's what the righteous should be. The righteous are bold as a lion. And so I believe that there comes a time when the church is forced to insist that the church must open in South Africa. There comes a point where the church has to say unashamedly, Mr. President and those that are in government, open the church of Jesus Christ without delay. And we need to say that with boldness and conviction. Come on, amen. Listen to this statement. There comes a time when our silence becomes unrighteous. Oh. I wanna say that again. There comes a time when our silence about the church being closed and shut down becomes unrighteous. And I wanna challenge you here. I pray that a, a new boldness would arise within you in terms of being willing to speak out and to make it known and to use whatever influence you have because we all have influence. But there is a time when our silence becomes unrighteous. 
It says in Acts 4, verse 19 to 20 in the message, but Peter and John, they spoke right back. And they said, whether it is right in God's eyes to listen to you rather than God, you decide. But as for us, there is no question. We cannot keep silent about what we have seen and heard. And I also believe, you know what, folks? That our humble compliance as the churches in South Africa over this time for basically a year now, that must not be misinterpreted as weakness. It must not be misinterpreted as weakness. And so take note, the church of Jesus Christ is rising up, I believe. I believe that the church of Jesus Christ is rising up like never before. Let faith arise in the hearts of God's people. Let more boldness arise. And you watch what God is gonna begin to do in the season ahead, not just for the reopening, but for greater purposes. Amen. Let's give the Lord a hand of praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Why don't you stand with me right now as we pray and worship team, you can come up so long. Father, I wanna thank you for your word today. Lord, as we look at that New Testament church, as the early church, I am personally challenged because I see a church moving forward in great boldness in God. And so we say to you, Lord, would you cause the church of Jesus Christ right across the nation of South Africa, would you cause the church of Jesus Christ to rise up in the name of Jesus? Would you cause your church to be filled with the Spirit of God, with supernatural boldness from on high? You say we have not because we ask not, but now we are asking, Lord, fill me with boldness. Won't you say that with me? Lord, fill me with boldness. Say that again. Lord, fill me with boldness and use me, Lord, at this time that I would be an influence for your kingdom. But thank you, Father. We see with the eyes of faith that the churches will be reopened, fully reopened. We see that the church will begin to experience revival as people are so hungry to be in the courts of the Lord, to be in corporate worship, to experience the power of God. And we believe not only in the gatherings that the church will rise up, but also in the small groups as we are in our businesses, as we are in our day-to-day -day works, as we are on campus, that the church of Jesus Christ will rise. And so we thank you, Lord, for more boldness, more boldness, more boldness. Amen. Let's give the Lord a big hand of praise. Hallelujah.